Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Now just consider this for a moment. We try to live within our income so that we can afford to pay taxes to a government that can't live within its income. Hmm. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America on a Monday, August 17th, Cash County Fair Week. Good morning. And a good, good morning to you and yours. I'm Zeb Bell at Zeb at the Ranch, and, of course, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with very safe, clean environment and the best in tires. Along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Sweet Two in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have a patriot with the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done, my friend. Well done. And right now, let's go to the weather forecast. K&R Rental. Oh, my goodness. Roger and the crew are there already this morning. Honey, what's going to be a warm day at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, right there on the Burley Paul Highway. And as I've been telling you, they've got all the tools and equipment for any task, any construction project, whatever you need. Not sure what you need? Well, then call them. Find out. Six seven eight three one two two. They offer uh, tools and equipment for rental on a long and short term basis. So you better check them out today. K and R Rental. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. You invest thousands of dollars on a vehicle to drive a couple of hours. That's and not Gina with the weather. Life sleeping. Have you invested? Hello, Sean. Turn that off, please. Invest in your health. That's not the weather forecast, and hopefully, all right, we'll get it fixed and have the weather momentarily. And again, our weather sponsor, K and R Rental at two fifty six South, six hundred West of Hayburn, on the Burley Paul Highway. You cannot miss them; they're there to serve you. And like I said, the number to call and talk to Roger and find out what you need before you drive over six seven eight three one two two K and R Rental. We'll have a redo on that weather momentarily but right now I also want to mention to you that's not the weather either a, uh, I want to mention to you Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley and believe me they can get your clothes looking brand spanking new you be sure and stop in at 1223 Albion Avenue and uh, take in all your rumply crumplies and then go get them and you'll think holy smokes I don't remember going to the store and buying all these great looking clothes they do a wonderful job and have uh, worked on my clothes for a long, long time. If they can make me look good with my clothes, you can make anybody look good. Let me tell you, Daryl's Cleaners, Kevin and Cindy and the whole outfit at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in and see those really, really nice folks today. One more good word, and then we'll welcome calls. And that good word extends from Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. They also get there early in the morning at 7.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. And I urge you, with the warm days ahead, I think we're going to be looking at days of uh, 90-plus every day for a while. I urge you to check out your air conditioning unit. And if you need new filters to keep it running efficiently, they've got 
got them all right there at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call 6780459 Ramsey Heating and Electric. Let me check with Sean. Sean, do we have a uh, a weather forecast? We have the weather. All right, let's play it right now, please, if you would. Got a bottle of water and sunscreen handy for today and honestly for the next couple of days because we're going to be in a heat advisory. Here's what's your weather forecast. We are expecting sunny skies for today and a high of 100. Mostly clear skies for tonight, low of 64. Tomorrow, sunny and hot. Again, a high of 98 with an overnight low of 64. By Wednesday, mostly sunny, 96, maybe 92 for Thursday. That's what your weather for is at the ranch. I know it's warm right now inside this studio, and it's going to get warmer, so be sure and hydrate and stay in the shade if you get a chance. Hey, a big shout-out to Dino Septic Service and all they do for you. And when I say that, I mean the jobs that you don't want to be doing. Can you imagine standing out there trying to pump a septic tank in 100-degree weather? Oh, no, thank you. Or liquid waste removal or sewer and sink drain line cleaning. Oh, but they do it with a smile on their face. Dino Septic Service, with all the new advances in equipment, like the camera that can go down through the pipes and find out what the trouble is, fast, fair, friendly service, 436-6526 or 678-1638. I'm talking about Dino Septic Service with that big truck that says, smells cargo on the way. You give them a call today. There is, and I'll argue this with anybody, a complete insanity and unbalance and unfairness in the news media. They pick and choose and promote or delete certain stories that they think may hurt a certain cause. Now, that being said, I was absolutely appalled and saddened. And I should back up a little bit because in Chicago, there have been so many shootings of innocent bystanders, including children, young children, mostly black young children. I I remember the pictures that were shown on television of the 18-month-old boy and the little girl, etc. And it just breaks my heart. It just absolutely breaks my heart. But there was recently a shooting, and a white five-year-old boy was riding his bike. And the neighbor, who was black, walked up to the little boy and point-blank range shot the young boy in the head and killed him. Now, I did some checking. And the major networks did little or no, no coverage of this story. And uh, I also listened to some of the Fox News people like Tucker Carlson and Hannity and some others. They also reported that there was not any coverage by the major networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, etc., on this story. Because of the reversal of the dangers of this story. It was a black man shooting a young five-year-old boy in the head and killing him. Now, let's be fair and honest here, and let's be very, very poignant about how we say this. If the story had been reversed, and it was a black child, very unfortunately, killed by a white man, all heck would have broken loose in the news media. It would have been headline news everywhere. But I'm just going to come out and say my attitude on this is because of Black Lives Matter and because of the political situation today with the left, this story was relegated to almost the back page. 
Your thoughts, give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't weaken on me, folks. I want to hear from you. Caller, I'll be right there, and I want to remind everybody about Save on Shells with my good friend Anthony. Listen, you need to protect what's in the back of your truck, whether it's your tools, whether it's your fishing equipment, whatever it might be. And if you're looking for a camper shell, I tell you to look no further than Save on Shells at 1827 Overland in Burley with Anthony. Not only does he have a wide assortment of camper shells, he's got everything. I mean, quality service, low prices, and with the ARE shells, a lifetime warranty, I'm telling you, they're the best. I know because I own one. And he can help you. Anthony at Save on Shells. Call him. Call this number, 312-1525. Let him know you're coming. 312-1525. Save on Shells. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Thank you. You know, they say fences make good neighbors. But sometimes that's not possible. This little boy of five years old, probably on his tricycle, got on this guy's lawn. You know, he wasn't thinking. He doesn't know any different. And this guy shoots him. My goodness, that should have been the biggest story of the year right there. Well... Uh, I, I, to, I totally agree with you. It was outright murder. It's an outrageous story. And uh, circumstances that were prevalent before the shooting had the uh, shooter having supper, I think it was, with the father uh, and the family. And so they were not enemies by any means. But uh, for some reason, this guy that had been arrested many times on some felonies uh, just came uncorked and shot this young man. And I totally, totally agree with you. This would have been a front-page headline news everywhere if, if the colors had been reversed. You know, I'm going to make one prediction that when it comes to Joe Biden, when he asks you something, put the answer back on him. You know, answer a question with a question. Yeah. Almost century, uh, almost a half a century, he was in politics. And can he name one major thing? that he did during that time. No, I think your point is well taken, and I think the Trump administration and President Trump in the debates will do that. I think it would be very appropriate for President Trump in a professional manner to look at Joe and say, Joe, you've been a politician for over 50 years, and I'd sure like the public to know all the great things, the assets and the negatives that you have helped uh, promote or those that you tried to stop. Go ahead, take the stage. Joe, tell us about it. I can't help but laugh at what you're saying, because this guy is laughable. But you know, he has such a sweet, smooth delivery, until you back him into a corner, and then he turns into a doggone animal. Well, Joe is not going to survive, and I don't mean this in life terms. I mean political terms. Joe is not going to survive these debates. Uh, I honestly think, uh, Keith, there's something in the back of my mind, and you can call me uh, uh, kind of a person that always sees a negative here, but I see a negativity with Biden standing up at the podium at these debates. I see his handlers in the Democratic Party not wanting to go through through with this i'm still not sold that it's going to happen i got to take another call here in a minute but thank you very much i appreciate it like to say joe biden is just a pawn in the game well i'm not going to argue with you I am not, and it's good to hear from you. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate it. Thank you much. All right. Hey, by the way, it's Cashew County Fair Week, and Butte Irrigation at 116 South, 600 West, Highway 27 in Paul, or the other location uh, about north of Kimberly by Red Cap Corner. 
They want to tell you that they've got more parts for more brands than any dealer in Magic Valley. And believe me, they will get you wet with those somatic pivots. Don't forget Butte Irrigation, telling you to come on in to the Cassia County Fair and Rodeo. Along with Mountain Transmissions at 1146 East Main and Burley with old Rick. And I'll tell you what, when you got a transmission problem, this is the man to see. They are your one-stop transmission repair facility with over 30 years of service in the industry. Industry, they know, they know. Mountain Transmissions and AMI, 719 Overland Avenue in Burley. All you have to do is look for the big 28 foot wrench over the door and you'll go nuts over their bolts. They always are supportive of all the community events. AMI. All of these people invite you to attend the Cassia County Fair and Rodeo. By the way, quickly, come on, calls. I want to see that phone line light up. Uh, uh, while you're in town for the Cache County Fair and Rodeo, you know that you're going to get hungry. And you know that you want to get all filled up with the best of food. Well, I urge you to stop at the Home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, and they've got another location serving you at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. I mean, whether it's breakfast before you go to the fair and showing and judging and everything, or whether it's lunchtime or dinner, all the desserts, everything is delicious and really nice people serving you at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, 611 North Overland in Burley, and our Zeb's Lunch Lunch Bunch is going to be there next, not this week, but the week after on the 27th for Lunch Bunch. All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. The Democratic Convention, <laughs> this is almost too funny, uh, the way it's all set up and going to be staged, is going to be starting today in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, my old home state. I lived about 45 miles away. And it's going to be held mostly because of virtual coverage on the Internet. And uh, all the speeches and the guests will be on the Internet. And tonight they're going to have, I'm just going to narrow it down to a couple, they're going to have Bernie Sanders, the well-known communist and socialist uh, speaker, is going to be on there, along with Michelle Obama. That's tonight. And uh, believe me, it's uh, really going to be interesting to hear what they have to say. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Uh, going back to 1939, 1940, when uh, uh, Germany and England were going at it, uh, Germany was going to flood England with bogus money to destroy the economy. And we got something similar going on here with the Democratic Party, and that bogus uh, uh, means of... Uh, voting by mail, they're hoping that this will destroy our electoral system, and they will be able to move right in and take over. You know, Tony, I've got into some heated arguments in the last couple of days regarding mail-in voting. I am absolutely opposed to it. I went along with it for the uh, primaries here in the state of Idaho, but I'm never going to advertise or promote it again. I think it's open for complete chaos. And when you have a liberal, and he is very liberal, and almost on the side of Democrats most of the time on Fox News, Chris Wallace asked asking the question, isn't it possible that the president really has a point here talking about mail-in balloting and how it could be easily disrupted and illegal? Then you got to start asking yourself, yes, there is a problem. How do we take care of it? Well, Comrade uh, Pelosi uh, knows exactly what that would do to the country, and that's why she's behind it. Well, absolutely. Trump can put a stop to it. 
I think, honestly, it would be the biggest disaster and the biggest fraudulent vote ever in the history of not only this country, but any country. And I absolutely believe that we are not capable of doing it. The votes will not be counted. And the ones that are turned in, it's going to take a long time after Election Day. And there's way too many areas for people to get their fingers in the pie and make it an illegal election. That's right, and there'll be more cities destroyed waiting for this thing to get corrected. Let me ask you a question. Uh, when you go down to get your driver's license renewed, do you not have to stand in line? Oh, yeah. All right. Definitely. So what's the problem with standing in line to get your driver's license, but you can't stand in line to go vote? kind of figured uh, if they can get around to voting and just vote by mail, stay home while they're having a cocktail or smoking a cigar, things are going to work out all right. But in the climate we've got right now that's going on in this country, the cheaters are just sitting back trying to uh, develop a bogus type of uh, a paperwork the system, and that, that's just going to destroy everything. I couldn't agree more. Tony, God bless you and Mary. I hope she's well, and uh, thank you for your call in this morning. God bless you, man. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, sir. Uh, real quick, I want to remind everybody about what's going on at the Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care at 382 North Overland and Burley, and Urgent Care of Twin Falls on Addison Avenue East, and the Urgent Care of Jerome. You know what they're doing? They're providing $10 sports physicals. That's right, just 10 bucks. Normally, they were 20 bucks. No appointment necessary. Listen to me now. And 100% of the money will be donated back to their school's athletic program. Programs. This is wonderful, and I really give a great big shout-out to Kyle and the rest of the folks for supporting this community a, a great event of having the sports physicals available for just 10 bucks, and then they're donating it right back to the athletic programs. You stop in Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Urgent Care of Twin Falls, and Urgent Care of Jerome. Hey, you know what? I'm going to give away some cookies right now. I'm going to get that uh, taken care of right this very minute. And uh, Sophie's Chatterbox is a sponsor for our cookies, and I really want to give a great big shout-out to them at 530 East Street, right on the square in Rupert. Now, boy, belong, well, along with that bakery, they've got an absolute fantastic restaurant right there at the same location. And you can go in and just absolutely enjoy delicious food. And then, you know, the bakery, everything from the pies, the cookies, the uh, cakes, the wedding cakes, oh, my, everything's delicious. So if you're the winner of this trivia question, you call them and tell them when you'll be in to pick up your cookies. Okay, here's the question. And call either 436-2244 or 1-866-927-4587. What was the character name for the black cook uh, in the movie, the John Wayne movie, The Cowboys? What was the character name for the black cook in the movie, The Cowboys? What was his name in the movie, the character name? Give me a call quickly and you'll win the cookies. A dozen delicious mouth-watering cookies from Sophie's Chatterbox. Give me a call real, real quick. I'd sure appreciate it. Come on. Get on the phone, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. What was the character name? of the black cook on the trail drive in the movie the cowboys come on quickly give me a call uh, while I'm waiting for your call that I hope is coming in, don't forget the Cache County Fair and Rodeo is in full, full swing. Let me tell you, they're busy. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yes. Well, go ahead. Don't just say yes. <laughs> okay, his name is Mr. Light Nightlinger. And who is this? 
Max Heward. Max Heward. Well, by golly, it's good to know that somebody else follows cowboy movies like I do. Mr. Nightlinger was the name, and you are 100% correct. Go into Sophie's and get your cookies, buddy. Are you there? All right. Max, give him a call. Tell him when you'll be in. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're right. Good day, Sam. All right, sir. Thank you very, very much. Yep, it was Mr. Light Nightlinger. I almost said the wrong way. Mr. Nightlinger. And uh, he was a very interesting actor with the voice that sounds like he came right off the Shakespearean stage. Excellent actor, and I really appreciated him. What's going on at the Cache County Fair and Rodeo today? Well, let me take a look. Of course, tonight and tomorrow night, they're going to have the Moto Rodeo. Rodeo. And then don't forget on Wednesday, the big, big parade. That's going to be exceptionally good. That's this Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, PRCA Rodeo Action at its best. Don't you miss a minute of it. Later on this morning, we're going to be having Ryan Samples come back and highlight all the big events, including also at 1 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, the Paramutual Horse Racing, and on Saturday, starting at 8 in the morning, 4 H and F. FFA Market Animal Sales. So there's a bunch of things to do at your Cache County Fair and Rodeo. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Morning, morning to you. Top of the morning to you, laddie. Hello, man that never calls. <laughs> I drove by your place a couple times last week and... You guys must have been cabbed up inside where it was cool. Well, if the pickup's here, yours truly is hiding someplace. <laughs> it was there. All right, buddy. What can I do for you? I just seen a video, and I don't know authenticity of it, but I'm throwing it out there for some people to maybe look and see that on a mail-in ballot... The protective sleeve so nobody can tamper with it that you put your signature on and send it back. The gal showed that she's a registered Republican and her brother's a registered Democrat. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for her. But anyway, they live in the same house and she showed his number, the barcode number on the back, and it has a D on it. Mm -hmm. And hers has an R on it. Okay. Okay. So... She says that right there, you know, if you've got postal workers that are real staunch, you'll see those R's, oh, this one gets lost, this one gets lost. Right there. Hold it. Hold it. Just a second, Doug. You've touched on something that needs to be elaborated on. The inefficiency or the ineffectiveness or the outright criminal attitude towards these ballots is easy to sway and do away with. Would you agree? Yes. Yes, I would. I mean, if you vote in person and you put your stuff in that machine, that machine counts it. But now I, I question some of the machines. You've got computers you can rig and rule them, and especially when Soros furnishes a lot of the voting machines around the country. And by the way, l let me also throw this at you. Okay. That... The President of the United States right now is being besieged by negative remarks by the Democrats saying that he is trying to kneecap the Postal Service and claim that they're inefficient and fraudulent and they've wasted money. Let me bring to mind, if you will, for over the last 10 years, long before President Trump, the Postal Service had been accused and it had been shown that they were inefficient and not working in a cost-effective fashion. Exactly. Exactly true. Washington, D.C. has not been working for the American people for the last 50, 60 years. But yet, President Trump's been in there three and a half, and it's his fault. Yeah, everything is Trump's fault, and I'm fed up with it. You know, it's just like locally, every week in the Times News, and I dare somebody to tell me I'm wrong, uh, former Supreme Court judge and attorney general for the state of Idaho, Jim Jones, always writes negativity about Trump and laces together like a pair of tennis shoes everything that's Trump's fault, and I'm fed up with it. Well, it, yeah. 
the reason they're blaming Trump is because Trump is exposing them. He's shining light on what they've been doing to the American people, and they don't like it. Absolutely. Losing their good old boys club where everybody scratches everybody else's back. I, I really have put together a list, and I haven't got it right here on my desk, of all the things that Trump supposedly has been guilty of, and they're pointing the finger at him so they can create negativity so he won't get reelected. But you know what? None of those buckets hold water. They've got holes in them. They do, especially this peace accord between Israel and the, eight, let's see, Emirates, yeah. the Emirates Company. I mean... Here, Biden stepped up and was trying to take credit for it. Yeah. Uh, If the Democrats are trying to take credit for it, it must be a big deal. (laughs) I, I just get really upset when I hear and see these allegations by Pelosi and Schumer and everything saying that uh, he's going to withhold the $25 billion to the Postal Service just for his favor to get the election uh, on uh, no bail in, just walk into the polls. Well, I'll be honest with you, Doug. I hope and pray that it is only walk into the polls and present your ID and vote. That's the only, quote-unquote, legitimate way of having an election. Exactly. And if they won't go for voter ID, I say get some ink and everybody dip your finger in the ink once you vote so you only vote once. You got it. I'm uh, absolutely adamant about this. Hey, listen, I've got another calling in uh, caller coming in, but uh, give us your little senior spiel that's excellent. Well, everybody, you know, the senior centers, these people, they need some help, especially the ones that are shut in and need meals on wheels. That's the only people they see most of the time. That's right. So, and that's their wellness check also. Absolutely. So let's support them, donate to them. If you're butchering a beef or something like that, have them, give them 100 pounds of hamburger. There you go. I mean, just help them what you can, and go eat there if you can, because, like I've said, you'll leave with a full tummy and a full heart. I agree. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, Caller number two, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Go ahead, uh, if you would, please. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Well, I can say it only way the Democrats have any real opportunity and they're pushing so hard for it is this mail-in voting. You know, absentee is one thing. That's totally different. But um, in the last election, and then you just mentioned that you need to have an ID that you're a U.S. citizen. And a lot of states see our, I don't know how many states there are, don't even require that anymore. So you can just go in and you can be cool. Where, wherever in, in vote, the last election, they found that in California alone, 449,000 illegals voted. Um, and most of them probably voted for Hillary. Well, uh, how did they know that? Well, they used the voter rolls, um, people that had voted, and then they used the voter rolls to select jury for jury duty. Mm-hmm. So they sent out a questionnaire, and of course, the illegals, it, they can't be on a jury, and there's 449,000 of them in. It's un- in- incredible. It's almost, wait a minute, let me jump in here. Huh. Let me let me jump in here, Adrian. When you say 449,000, that is almost half of the state population of the state of Idaho that were fraudulent votes. Yeah, and so, um, you know, you look at history, I can remember, I mean, there's been so many dead people. Um, Whenever the Republican convention, I believe it was, was in Chicago, I think in the 70s. Well, anyway, um, there was a reporter from one of the major networks was out there, showed a vacant lot. Nothing was there, no house or anything. And somebody had been voting at that vacant. Yeah, yeah lot address yeah then they went over to a big stone in the cemetery camera zoomed in that person had been dead for decades anyway they were were regular voters um and so the the analysis at the end the the 
journalist that was doing the reporting said, you may die in Chicago, but you'll always vote. There you go. I'll never forget that. Yeah, I got, I've got. i got another call coming in, and I want to be fair to everybody this morning. Stop and insist that no mail-in voting, because that's the only way the Democrats have a shot at it. I agree. And, uh, and of course, Trump's going to be blamed for everything like he has in the past. So I agree. No difference there. Thank you, Adrian. I got to run. I got another call before the weather, and I appreciate that. And I'm going to keep fighting against mail in voting for sure on this program. Thank you so much. God bless. Take care of that cold. Sounds like you got a dandy. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, caller number two, stand by. I'll be right there, I promise. I've got to get this in. Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts. Absolutely three locations serving you for all the equipment for lifting and digging and pushing and carrying and leveling and grading and laying the sod. Oh, I'm telling you, they got them all. All the bobcats in the various sizes, all the trenchers, all the scissor lifts. They've got all the Doosan wheel loaders and excavators. Super, super great financing programs and and excellent lease programs. You better get in there today and talk to the people that care. Barry Equipment and Rental, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin, and the Napa location for Barry Equipment and Rental. Caller, thank you. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I've been voting since I was 21, and that was John Kennedy that got elected, which I did not vote for. But I've voted at every election since then, faithfully, because I think it's our duty. If you didn't vote, you don't have a voice. It, well, I totally agree with you, and I think it should be done in the pride and the uh, honest system of showing your ID, signing your name, telling everybody who you are. If you can stand in line at the DMZ to get your license, if you can stand in line to get into a movie that's very popular, if you can stand in line anywhere, why can't you stand and wait a few minutes to get into the election booth and contribute your American privilege of voting? I mean, this is insane, and I don't want to make it easy. Easier. I don't want to make it easier for people to possibly cheat or be uh, less honest on their balloting. I think everybody should go to the polls on that day, walk in or be rolled in in a wheelchair or whatever. I'm going in on my crutches, and everybody can vote and have the same integrity. I never have been in the line that I didn't meet somebody I didn't know, but I knew him after that. So that's one advantage. You get to know somebody. But let me tell you how I remember the, uh, how it's supposed to be. You First of all, you have to register yep. as a future voter. Yep. And then when you go to that poll, they'll have your name listed there. Yep. And that's check one. And then they ask for your driver's license. Or identity card. That's right. And they look at you. Yes, that's the same person. And then you're given a ballot, and you have a space where nobody can look over your shoulder, and you cast your ballot. You know? It's a very simple process. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I'm sick and tired of the Democrats saying that that's voter suppression. The demented Democrats absolutely will use any excuse they can to have a free-for-all, and I mean free-for-all, as far as voting is concerned. If we can't take pride in who we are and who we represent ourselves at a certain address, then nobody should be allowed to vote. I want to verify who I am. I'm not at all ashamed of it. I'm proud of it, and everybody should do the same. If you've got a neighbor that you don't really know very well, you could go to them and say, could I take you down and get your register? And at that time, they said, well, I don't have any transportation. You do that, and then when it's time to go to the polls, you come Amen. Amen. Waiting in line. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to go with any excuse, Keith. I'm not going to abide by any excuse. It's too hard. It's too time consuming. Oh, cry me a river and get real. Be proud to be an American. I got to run, Keith. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> you too. 
<laughs> All right. Hey, don't forget our weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And they've moved to a larger space uh, on the Minidoka Memorial Hospital campus, right behind the emergency room. You can't miss them. You can't miss them. And they're better serving you. They're doubling their patient capacity and adding new services. I urge you to call for your hearing health at 312-0957. That number again, 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Keep that bottle of water and sunscreen handy for today and honestly for the next couple of days because we're going to be in a heat advisory. Here's what's your weather forecast. We are expecting sunny skies for today and a high of 100. Mostly clear skies for tonight, low of 64. Tomorrow, sunny and hot. Again, a high of 98 with an overnight low of 64. By Wednesday, mostly sunny, 96, maybe 92 for Thursday. That's what's your weather for is at the Oh, thank you, Gina. Appreciate it. Don't forget for your hearing health, you need to get a hold of the professionals that really know and have the best of uh, technology to serve you. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, 312-0957. You call them and let them help you today. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-224-1866-927-4587. I just don't understand. I don't understand how absolutely sick and demented and criminal And there's a lot of other words I can use, but some of which are not appropriate for the radio. The left can get. These vermin mobsters, and I'm just going to call them what they are, sleaze. When they are starting to attack Ronald McDonald houses with very sick children inside, breaking windows and scaring the daylights out of these kids and their moms and dads, I didn't think the left could go much lower. But they have created a new slime on the bottom of their barrel. And to think that Democratic vice presidential pick, Camilla Harris, and I don't give a rip how you pronounce her name, comes out and says about the rioters, oh, what they're doing is a moral reckoning for the country. Let me repeat that. She did say what they're doing is a moral reckoning for the United States. This woman is dangerous. This woman is dumb. And if you want to take offense at that, bring it on, baby. Because when little children that are fighting for their lives with various diseases are inside a Ronald McDonald house, and that's a target for the left and their vermin, something has got to be stopped now. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Somebody needs to buy that woman a dictionary, an old one, not a new one, but an old one. In what regard? Well, because uh, I think she's looking at the new Democrat translated um, dictionary, so moral means rioters, and uh, there was another word she said, and that's like, oh, really? You know? Yeah. So I think they need to get a an old translation, you know, when Webster first wrote the dictionary. Yeah, but let me ask you something. Do you have children? I do. They're all grown. Okay, but let's, okay, that's fine. But hang with me a minute. Let's assume that one of your children had a devastating disease and was waiting to go to the hospital and see the doctors and the practitioners and waiting at a Ronald McDonald house and you and your husband are there waiting with your child and then all of a sudden the Ronald McDonald house that's a haven for these sick children is under attack by the liberal left what how low can people go I don't know. I keep thinking we've hit bottom. They've hit they, not we. I keep thinking they've hit bottom, and then they surprise me again. Yeah, they get a shovel and go deeper. 
They they get a shovel and go deeper to be lowest of vermin on the face of the earth. I mean, here's these poor children, and they were cowering in fear inside this Ronald McDonald house as the windows were being broken and everything, and the left stands for this garbage? Well, they're just, they're just protesters. Come on, Zip, give me a break. No, no, don't go there, lady, because I know you're saying it in jest, but my blood pressure is 200 over 100 right now. Oh, I know. Oh, and mine is too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Grandma needs to go get those little brats and drag them home by the ear. And if Grandma don't do it, then Great Grandma needs to get up out of the grave and go do it. Oh, I totally agree. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. God bless you for your call. Thanks. And then, to make matters worse, I was looking at a a newspaper story yesterday. I had that here right here in front of me, a picture of the violence that has erupted at rallies across the rallies. My foot. These are absolute destitute of any common sense people that want to just wreck America. And uh, these punk kids, and most of them are punk kids. Like that lady said a minute ago, grandma or mom or dad ought to go grab them by the earlobe and just literally drag them home, put a vice grip on their earlobe and drag them home. This is ridiculous and insane what they're doing. And then the Black Lives Matter comes out. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And with all the rioting, the looting, and the burning, one of their spokespeople said, well, this is a form of us getting reparations. Think about that. Burning, looting, and rioting in Chicago with some of the most uh, elite and exquisite stores. Oh, well, we're just getting reparations. I know what they really need to get, and it's not reparations. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Would somebody call me and tell me why, in this day and age... Would the city of New York not have a tribute like they have every year since it happened, a tribute to 911? It seems like Mayor de Blasio and others have got together and said, oh, that's not that important anymore. We're not going to do it. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. I had one other thought I forgot to tell you. Did you see that video of a... The Black Lives Matter and Antifa go up to Sturgis and try to face off with those 350,000 bikers. I did not see it, and I had about six phone calls regarding that. Did you? Yeah, I did, and it was so funny because the police are having to protect the Antifa. But here's my thought. Maybe, Maybe President Trump needs to get hold of the bikers and say, hey, we'll compensate you for lost wages and pay your gas. Um... And turn you loose on Portland and Seattle, and because they didn't, they didn't raise a hand to those people, hmm. not a hand. But uh, but let me tell you, Black Lives Matter left town with their tail between their legs. You know, I've said this for a long time, and I really don't care who's offended. I think that if we had problems with the Black Lives Matter or Antifa here in the West, I think just go and get a bunch of bulldoggers in pro rodeo, and I'll guarantee you, I think you'd see more than just a tail between their legs as the Black Lives Matter headed out of Dodge City. Exactly. Hey, God bless you for your call. Thank you much. All right, take care. Call her quickly. I've only got two minutes, and i got to get another commercial in. Go, please. Well, quickly, a story about Black Lives Matter and our dangerous mayor of Boise. Uh, when Black Lives Matter were protesting downtown, even though it was somewhat of a mild protest, it was still Black Lives Matter in Boise. And when the white people went down to counter-protest, these are citizens of the city of Boise. These are citizens of the city of Boise who went down to protest, you know, law and order in favor of it. She called them white supremacists. Yeah. This is what the mayor of Boise called the people down there who peacefully want law and order. I put in, here's a call that you might find interesting. I put in a call to that office up there to see if she might find time to come on my program. Gee, Randy. 
I didn't get any response. Can you please tell me why? She's the most dangerous person in Idaho, or the voters of Boise are the most dangerous or misled people in Idaho. There's a thing called dark money. Yeah. And uh, Lauren McLean, and uh, if you look and see what she wants to do with the city of Boise, I'm telling you, it's it's got to end, and I have more information on this subject, but I know you're out of time. Yeah, call me after the program, and I mean that. Don't forget. Don't pull a Doug Martin on me. Doug was supposed to call me 17 days ago, so call, call me after the program, please. Okay. All right. Thanks, buddy. Calls welcome four three six two. I'm kidding, Doug. I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Absolutely the best. I mean that. That's not brag. That's a fact. They've got all the service trucks to help you on the farm, the ranch, the dairy. Absolutely, they'll be there when you need them. And they've got all the tires for all your driving needs, all the sizes, all the tread designs. You get down in there, and they can help you with your tires, the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, all of this and more, but especially service to you. They really, really care. James and Buell, Dan on pole line and Twin Falls, Lane and Rupert, Mike and Jerome, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, the Twist family, nice people over in Paul, and of course my buddy Trent on Overland in Burley. The best, serving you, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, you stop in and see them today. Holy cow, the clock on the wall says it's time to skedaddle for about seven minutes. I'll be back right after CBS News. Don't go away, Zeb at the Ranch. Good morning, good morning on a Monday, August 17th. Cache County Fair Week, Zeb at the Ranch, and of course, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a very safe, clean environment, and of course, the best in tires. And of course, our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, I got some good words to take care of. Of. Here's the good folks with Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're rolling the Jordan Stubble. Western Waste, Service Grizzly Care of our community, our resources, and this free land. Western Waste, Service Grizzly is lending a hand. Always the Jordan Stubble. Western Waste. Call the number 734-6969 and tell them you'd like to get on the weekly route service where they come by, pick up your garbage. It's gone. It's out of there. Western Waste Service is one of their many services. The weekly pickup, always at your disposal. 734-6969. want to also give a great big shout out to our friends over at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. And and Nick Greenwell also controls and owns Elite Fitness at 1200 Oakley Avenue in Burley. I'm telling you what, stay fit. And if you have a problem, don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation and all the excellent physical therapists working and serving you. At 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, call the number at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation and make an appointment. 678-1191. That number again, 678 678- Six seven eight one one nine one. As they help you get back to being you, we're going to have my dear friend Rick Manning on the program momentarily. But right now, I also want to urge you to remember this number four three six five six three six. That is the telephone number for Hanson Mortuary at seven ten Sixth Street in Rupert. And we all, all should talk to them about pre planning of funerals. They absolutely have the most flexible hours to serve you and your family when there's the passing of a loved one, and they always provide the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort and always upholding the highest of ethical standards 
with unquestioned integrity. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636. And Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. I'm running behind this morning. I'm trying to catch the stagecoach getting out of Dodge City, but I'll tell you what, I also want to remind you about Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland in Burley. Woo! They've got great food, and they are America's Diner. Really, really good menu choices, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, anytime, all the time, and all the desserts, and nice people serving you. We're going to be over there on the 27th for another version of our Zeb's Lunch Bunch. Don't you miss it. Great eating at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. Right now, without further ado, adieu, adieu, let's go to the phone line and and talk to the president of Americans for Limited Government, my dear friend Rick Manning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, sir? <laughs> I've never been busier in my life. I mean, I'm trying to catch up, man. T- you've been in the radio business. Uh, conversation with somebody. And in D.C., August is supposed to be, like, dull and boring. You catch up on all your paperwork and stuff. And I have to tell you, it's been, like, it's been crazy. It's been absolutely crazy, and the craziness continues. It does, and Rick, I really appreciate you coming on the program every week. I mean, uh, you've got a lot of fish to fry, but I certainly appreciate your time. I relish your opinion on anything political, and I want you to expound a little bit this morning on the heat, the unnecessary heat and complaining the Democrats are giving President Trump about mail-in balloting and also the Postal Authority. Let me just say before you start that the post office in general has had a lot of monetary problems for well over a decade, and how they can hang all this monetary problem on President Trump is beyond me. Go ahead, please. Well, you're exactly right. Um, what you don't know is my, my wife is in the direct mail business, and as a result, she deals with the post office nonstop, 24-7. And, uh, and so when you... When I want to get her attention. I start talking about barcodes, and her ears perk up. But the um, so yeah, the post office has been in trouble for a really long time. the The challenge is obviously that um, uh, millennials and Gen Z people, many of them, don't even know how to mail a piece of mail. They don't really just to put a stamp on it, okay? Because they've all used, grown up using email, and so this concept of uh, snail mail is is really remote to them. So. You know, Nancy Pelosi has been is making a big deal out of oh, there's some kind of U.S. postal system crisis. It's malarkey. Here's the crisis: the public employees, the postal workers union, has such a generous pension program that the U.S. Postal Service hasn't been paying into it, and as a result of that, they are you know they are hemorrhaging they are hemorrhaging debt to the to the pensions and still not able to make a profit without paying into the pensions. And so the people who are behind this are very, are, it's really simple. The Postal Worker Union wants a massive bailout from you and me, the taxpayers, ostensibly because of coronavirus, but really it's designed to create a, a payment to their pension fund to make their pension fund hold whole. They aren't willing to give up anything in order to get get that investment, to get that spending uh, from the from the government, the Republicans for years have been trying to get a pension reform plan uh, dealing with the postal service and total postal reform so that would bring them into the 21st century. Um, the the postal union has fought tooth and nail against that, and so the Democrats want a straight bailout. The Republicans have wanted to, if they're going to get money, they want to. They want to have uh, there to be a reform that make it so they don't need money next year also. And the, uh, and the Democrats have said no. So we've been at loggerheads on this issue for more than a decade. And the catalyst here is that President Trump brought in a uh, post, postmaster general who is trying to reform the post office. Imagine that. He's trying to make the post office actually get it out of the 1960s and into the into the 21st century, and in doing so, uh, the postal worker unions are insanely mad about it and are are ginning up a bunch of uh, nonsense about 
uh, the system's going to fail if we don't do this. One last point. Three, four, three years ago, there's an article on CNN, and you know people can look it up. Um, just Google it or whatever browser you choose to use. Um, but it, what that said was that the postal workers were that the U.S. Postal Service was found to be guilty of illegally violating the Hatch Act, which requires public employees to not be involved in political act, over political activities um, during work time. What they did is they, the union officials, sent a, sent a list of employees to the post office saying, we want, for the 2016 election to help Hillary Clinton, um, to the post office saying, we want these employees to be given leave, unpaid leave, unpaid leave and to volunteer in the elections and the postal service signed off on it irregardless didn't matter if it affected the delivery of mail during the that election hmm. so the post office under under Barack Obama was found to violate the rules of uh, the the Hatch Act rules, public employee rules, because they assigned people essentially to do political work for the for the postal worker union and to benefit Hillary Clinton, and you know, and, and so this was what happened four years ago. So when these when these bozos want to talk about ballot security and all that, the the bottom line with ballot security is their biggest problem is if your postal carrier is sitting there and he knows that he's he's got a so-called a republican precinct and a republican neighborhood you mail in your ballot you know you may not it may not get there he picks it up it gets in, it gets thrown in the trash you you have a problem with them being delivered by the postal service where they say well you know um this neighborhood's got too many trump or you see the trump sign in your front yard and he doesn't deliver your ballot I mean, it's as simple as that. It's, it's that level of um, of abuse that, that is why we want to have in-person voting. And when, as and quite honestly, if we can wait in line at Walmart, we can wait in line to vote. You know, I said the same thing on my program last hour. I said if you're going to wait in line to get your driver's license or you're going to wait in line to get into a popular movie at the theater or wait in line to get into a restaurant or for Pete's sakes, and I know that's true with grand openings of various restaurants, don't give me the garbage, anybody out there in the audience, that you can't do the same thing waiting for the greatest privilege of America, and that's going to vote. This is insane. It is. Well, but just remember, the Democrats are willing to, you know, forego uh, doing any additional stimulus, which, by the way, isn't a terrible thing. Um, but uh, they're willing to forego doing any additional st- stimulus if they don't get all mail balloting. And the reason the Democrats are fighting for all mail balloting has nothing to do with people not being able to vote. What it has to do with is a it is a system that is manipulable and is uh, absolutely ripe for uh, for fraud yeah and they want it because they want to because they don't have a problem with stealing elections and that is we saw in california where ballot harvesting existed you now ballot harvesting is uh, so people know because there's gonna be a lot of talk about ballot harvesting over the next over the next month um all ballot harvesting is is a an operative of one party or the other knows goes and applies for a mail-in ballot for a bunch of different people um, with their consent um, sometimes and then goes to those houses and picks up the ballots for those people and mails them in or set or delay and delivers them the problem with ballot harvesting is that the harvester doesn't necessarily can you know, doesn't necessarily deliver the ballots if he doesn't like or she doesn't like the results of the what boxes they checked. It also is a means of if people are, shall we say, um, invalid in a in a senior center, um, and a a lot of the nurses are, are union members in those uh, senior centers, and applying for absentee ballots from 
for everybody in the senior center and then taking care of the absentee ballot for these pe- for these people mm-hmm. by effectively marking them for them mm-hmm. and you know and then taking them in for the people to sign um that's a for and i'm talking about people who you know are are invalid in this particular instance that happens all the time it's a, it's, it's common fraud so mail in balloting brings gives so many chances to abuse the system and the absentee ballot system was designed to help people who had a real problem a real emergency that did not allow them to go to the polls it was not designed to be a an alternative to voting in person absolutely very well stated today marks the opening if you will of i believe the first ever virtual convention that the democrats are going to have in milwaukee and uh, i've got my own thoughts about this convention and to the absurdity of what's going to take place but i'd like to hear some of your thoughts well i think the democrats are, are very grateful that they're going to do their convention as a remote uh, convention um, and because the last thing they wanted was for a press corps to go to Milwaukee and visit about two blocks away from where the convention was supposed to be held and discover that the Milwaukee's been turned into a war zone um, and just like a lot of other big cities they're they're suffering from a dramatic increase in violent crime and they have, um, and there was a plan by the Antifa wing of the Democratic Party to try to disrupt the convention. And so the, so the best, their best possible scenario was to not have a live convention because Milwaukee would have made Chicago in 68 look like, uh, like a, you know, just a minor disagreement. So that's, uh, that was the good news for them. Um, the virtual convention has another great element for them in that nobody has to see Joe Biden live. They can have him in a very controlled environment and, uh, and there won't, he won't be standing up for all the public to see for an hour giving a speech. Um, and remember when Sarah Palin was nominated, um, to be John McCain's vice presidential uh, running mate. Uh, she won over. She won over the nation with her with her speech um, that she gave in front of a cheering crowd. There won't be any cheering crowds. Um, they might pipe in uh, sound noise, fan noise, like Major League Baseball does. But uh, you know, they but there won't be any cheering crowds. Um, but you won't be able to. You won't be required to be on stage with all the pressure of being on stage to deliver the speech of your life. Um, what people don't realize about Sarah Palin's speech is her is her teleprompter went out. So she gave that speech extemporaneous. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't one of those ones where she was reading a teleprompter, at which and you can't imagine what Joe Biden would say if his teleprompter went out. So it's a you know it, it'd be a he just start reading you know incoherent letters I guess. But it is a so they save the the problem of having to actually show their nominee for who he is um, in a mass setting, and there, it allows them to have an absolutely controlled environment, and there won't be independent reporting because reporters are just going to be looking online, and they won't have any access to any delegates or anybody else to talk about what, they're, what people are actually thinking, and as a result, it's the best scenario for the Democrats ever. Yeah. Um, they have a candidate who can't, can't perform on his own, and they're able to hide him. You know, Rick, uh, this next subject I want to get into, and I'm going to keep my temper from boiling over and saying the wrong verbiage in this story because I'm so contemptuous of these people that perform this act. I am absolutely outraged that the left and Black Lives Matter, Antifa, whomever, would stoop as low as they have in attacking and breaking windows at a Ronald McDonald house where children were inside. And then to have Kamala Harris come out and say about the rioters, etc., well, this is just a moral reckoning for America. I am going to use the best verbiage I can and say I'm outraged by this idiocy. America's got a choice. 
the, the Democrats are not hiding who they are. For years, they've hidden who they were. Okay, for years they pretended that they were that they were something else while they tra- while they were fundamentally transforming America. And we woke up one day and discovered well, how did this happen? How come we're not seeing the pledge allegiance in the schools? Why are we? How did all this stuff change? It was because we thought that we we were fooled by their friendly faces and nice nice soft talk about uh, using buzzwords that uh, that are common buzzwords. And now we've looked around and we see their VP nominee, the the one who is uh, the one who's got the most likelihood, she will be the VP if elected, with the most likelihood to become President of the United States of any VP in our nation's history. That's right. And she believes that rioting is justified. She she is she is the mayor of Portland. She is the mayor of Seattle. And so if you want the mayor of Portland, the mayor of Seattle, to be the president of the United States, vote for Biden and and Harris, Mm -hmm. because that's what you're going to get. That is excellent. And I don't care if you sit there and you say, you know, I don't like the way Donald Trump tweets. I don't like this. You know what? That's like... uh, that that style, the substance of Biden Harris, is a direct assault on America. Absolutely. And if she wins, if they win, America's the fundamental transformation of America will be complete because we will have all mail balloting, we will have ballot harvesting, we will have. Uh, discrimination lawsuits against anybody who doesn't agree with them. We will have the radio networks like the one that you're listening to right now shut down because of quote-unquote hate speech because they define anything that they don't agree with as being hate speech. You will essentially have the, the Twitter, Facebook, and Google censors applied nationwide to our airwaves. And, it's, and it will happen. That is what will happen. So it's a choice. And, you know, and just one last thing on Kamal Harris. Um, when there was a, there was a justice uh, uh, for federal court in, in uh, Nebraska, so a judge that was appointed by Donald Trump, and he was attacked by Kamal Harris because he was a member of the Knights of Columbus. Because the Knights of Columbus, did you know the Knights of Columbus uh, were not pro-choice? So he was attacked for being essentially a member of the Catholic Church and was told he was disqualified to be, by her, to be a president, a member of the federal bench because he's a member of the Roman Catholic Church. You compare that and Bernie Sanders attacks Russ Bott, who is the current OMB director during the confirmation hearing because he went to a Christian college mm. and, they asked, and they asked him about the statement of faith, the faith at Wheaton College. And Russ defended the statement of faith, um, but that was a disqualifier for Bernie Sanders to serve in government. If you believe in God, it's a disqualifier for these people oh to serve goodness. in government. And that is, you know, that's the whole ball game. So it's pretty straightforward. There's no, you know, a lot of times these guys who are, are kind of crazy try to move to the middle. Um, they believe that Joe Biden is the middle, and and then so they move to the left and they're trying to and if they if they, if they win they win because there may not be another chance because they'll change the way elections are done with a guarantee that we will it'll be much harder for americans to win their country back absolutely my dear friend rick manning president of americans for limited government and i again the time went too fast rick god bless you man thank you so much and i'll look forward to next monday thank you again Thanks, Ed. All right, sir. Thank you. I just absolutely treasure the time that he spends on this program, Rick Manning, and he's such a great speaker about what's going on politically in this United States. i got to pay some bills, and let's tell you a little bit about our friends over at Snyder Surplus. Hello, Leland. I'll tell you what, they've got all kinds of back-to-school type items. Yes, that's right. They've got books. If you're being at home and being homeschooled, they've got all the books and the desks 
and the backpacks and the kids' DVDs and much, much more. Check that out. And you heard the forecast. It's going to get hot. Not warm, hot. They've got all the porta cools, the swamp coolers on wheels, and all the big shop fans. All of this and more over at Snyder's Surplus. 116 South, 200 West of Rupert. Leland and the crew want to serve you. Stop over and see those good folks today. And like I mentioned in the first hour, I know old Anthony over there at Save on Shells. Man, I'll tell you what, protect your pickup, protect your belongings that are in the bed of that pickup with a camper shell. And he's got all the camper shells, all the new shells from A.R.E. And believe me, they are quality quality. I've had two, and they are absolutely great. One on a pickup I traded in, and now the one I've got now, I'll tell you what, he's got the best in camper shells. All you need to do is call him at 312-1525. That number again, 312-1525. Anthony at Save on Shells, 1827 Overland in Burley. A good, good old boy. I want to remind you, too, about our friends over to Let's Ride. Get your motor running and get up where it's cooler. (laughs) Get out of the valley floor and get up there in the mountains. Uh, Take off on a side-by-side or a four-wheeler from Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. Oh, my. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 2. You better get over there, check out all the great buys on the showroom floor, and then don't forget they've got all the accessories and if you already have a four-wheeler or a side-by-side they've got excellent excellent service department working to keep you running stop over let's ride 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world the number to call 436-4771 where the fun is sold Don't forget, too, over in that same neck of the woods or that part of the desert, don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Oh, my. The best of life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, and employee benefits, all for you, your family, and your business. Todd and the crew, very dedicated and responsive to your needs, and all you need to do is have the initiative to give them a call, make an appointment, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Really, really good folks. I'm not going to waste any more time because I want to get this man on the air and talk to him about all things political, and that happens to be the man from Beantown, and that's, of course, Gary Goldman. Good morning, my friend Gary. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, Zeb. How are you? And thank you for having me on the show. Well, you're always welcome here. And I can tell you what, we're having some really warm weather without the humidity that you have on the East Coast. What's your weather doing back there? Well, today it's a little cooler, but we have had, you know, day after day, 90 plus, 90, you know, high 90s. We had a little reprieve, but it's supposed to be getting warm again as the week goes on. So it's been a, it's been a very warm and dry summer here so uh who knows you know 2020 zeb is the year of the unknown let's face it so either why not why shouldn't the why should the weather be any different amen to that uh sean over at my studio if you would please uh, regulate the feedback just a little bit on this call i'd appreciate it gary i wanted to have you on the air the worst way to talk about the mess that we're seeing in america and i've mentioned this many times already this morning when the left goes as low as the slime in the bottom of a rain barrel and starts attacking a Ronald McDonald house for children waiting for surgery and medical care. I I thought I'd seen the bottom, but I guess I hadn't. No, I mean, look at they are totally out of control in in so many different uh, angles here. Whether it's the Ronald McDonald house, whether it's the hotels they're destroying across the uh, cities in this country, some of them being led in there by our by our infamous, infamous mayors and and these uh, social justice groups that think they're doing them good, letting these, these, these people in there. But, you know, Zeb, we do have a serious problem. The president is, you know, it goes out on a regular basis, and he, today I, I saw him, you know, talk to de Blasio, send him some warnings. And I'm all for the warnings, you know, like handle it yourself, but I think we're, it's to the point where we have to get the federal government more involved to bring this under the control for a number of reasons, Zeb. If... As this election cycle goes on, it's not going to quiet down. It's going to get worse. I think they know they're in trouble. They're seeing what's going on. 
and they're worried about it. And in the event that the president wins again, which I believe he will, I think we're going to see unrest like we've never seen before. So if we let this sort of simmer and go up and down until then, we're going to have a big, big problem, and it has to be quelled, and it has to be stopped. Who wants to live in a community where a bunch of low-life Antifa and Black Lives Matter Inc. people are, are in control? Who, who, who gave them the right and the authority to take over these cities? Well, I, I'll answer my own question. In a lot of cases, it's the mayors and the governments of those communities, and shame on them. All of them need to be... I, look, at. I believe there's mayors out there that need to be prosecuted for their actions and the things they're doing to allow this to go on. And the sooner we do that, the sooner we're going to bring this to an end. You know, uh, my previous guest before you, a dear friend of mine, Rick Manning, was on the air. He's on every Monday. And, you know, really what's going on in this country is an absolute Marxist attempt to show us. They're showing us how things would be if Biden and Harris become the next uh, political party to take over the White House. And when Kamala Harris comes out and says that all this rioting and looting and burning is showing a moral reckoning for America, I just got to sit back and go holy smokes we've lost the idiots have won yeah no look at the 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 groups that are out there and i think ag Barr referred to them as it's guerrilla warfare it is totally guerrilla warfare and whoever thought we'd see guerrilla warfare on the streets of the united states of america but we're really seeing it and people can pretend they're not saying it's there i mean no matter what these newscasts tell you everything's you know low profile there's no there's no craziness going on, and you see him throwing Molotov cocktails. But look at Camilla Harris calling these people social justice warriors and telling them to keep it up. You're doing something. You are doing something great. You're the heroes of our time. Seb, the heroes of our time that are throwing Molotov cocktails concrete at police offices, that are burning buildings, that are looting, that are, that are doing, as, as you alluded to, at Ronald McDonald houses. These are people that she's calling social justice warriors. Everybody needs to get a full understanding of who this person is and who Joe Biden really is, because as you said, this is just the beginning of the taste of what you will have if they are elected to office. You know, Gary, you're really sharp on what's going on inside the door of politics. And here we have the beginning of the Democratic National Convention today. Everything is going to be virtual. It's going to be just basically on the Internet uh, with Bernie tonight and Michelle Obama tonight and everything. But what does this tell you about a virtual convention? I mean, give me, give me your thoughts on what's going to take place here for the next four days. Yeah, I mean, it, well, all it's going to be is, again, you know, this is going to be one of the real love fests of the summer. You know, they're all going to get up there. They're going to talk great about the party, how they have to beat President Trump, how they're all unified and, and they're going to work together. The bottom line is they know they can't put uh, Joe Biden out in any type of environment except a controlled environment. Even at a convention, he would be dangerous if there was people there because he goes off, he goes off the cuff and starts speaking. This they're, they're doing this because they want to keep putting that narrative out there that everything is fine, we're in the lead, which, look at, I don't believe the polls at all. They're in the lead, and we're going we're gonna to win this you know, election. And they're going to continue to feed the flames of these groups like Antifa and Black Lives Matter and the far-left progressive movement, because if they do not, Zeb, you know, they'll be shut down in no time. They'll be going after them. So this is purely a way for them to keep the narrative going alive without being questioned and without anybody sort of contradicting anything they have to say. And it, look at it. I, I'm hoping that the American people are smarter than this because the mainstream media, social media, is not giving out the information that the public deserves to have. A presidential debate, we need to have uh, a personal ele- election. We need to have some debates. We have to have campaigning. And you've got to be able to ask the candidates questions, but not just one-sided questions and not questions that have been prepared by the Democratic Party to ask these candidates so that they could try and sweep through the back door and into the White House. 
Gary, you're going to laugh and probably snicker at me because of my attitude on this, but go ahead. I still firmly believe that between now and the first debate, there's going to be a cover-up. There's going to be a change of the guard. There's going to be something that's going to stop the debates and Joe Biden from being out in front of the public. I'm sorry, Gary. That's the way I feel. Well, look, at there's... I, I agree. I'm not going to disagree with you, Zeb, because I still have the belief that, uh, you know, until this uh, convention is over and they take the nomination and they roll with it, that someone else could be pushed into place. And there's no reason not to believe that Biden will not debate President Trump. He, let, let's, you know, I think anybody who sees the, the vice president knows there's something going on with his health. Sad situation. But if those, including his family, want to allow that to go on, who am I to say stop? That's what they're doing. At the same token, they know they can't debate this president. They know that Joe Biden doesn't have the mental capacity to do it. And I agree with you. Somewhere along the line, something will come up and there will not be a debate or something is going to happen. And there's still a part of me that says between now and Election Day, this thing could change a, change a bit. Um, who really knows? You read these stories, and I've read a lot of articles this weekend, Zeb, about how Camilla Harris keeps saying she's ready to take the rein when called upon to become president. I mean, who makes those comments when you've just been asked to become the vice president? Absolutely. I want to go back to Black Lives Matter and Antifa, two groups that I absolutely focus on daily on my program with a lot of animosity. I have no use for them. And I heard a commentator say with a uh, meeting with one of the Black Lives Matter spokespeople that the rioting, the looting, and the burning is a form of them, the Black Lives Matter, getting remuneration. That was really scary to me. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard that comment uh, totally outraged ages. You know, and, and I've heard Black Lives Matter saying we can loot and we can steal because a lot of these businesses have insurance. It just it just goes to show how ignorant they really are. This has nothing to do with Black, Black Lives Matter, Inc., as I like to refer to them, has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. They're purely, as you said, along with Antifa, anarchists who have this utopia vision of the way they believe the United States should be come. They hate this country. They want to change it. So the sad part of it is, God forbid, Zeb, if they were able to change it, you know, they're not going to be in any better position because there'll be a hierarchy in whatever they change it to, and they'll still be sitting where they are. But with that said, they're a dangerous group. Their facade is nothing more than chaos on the streets of America. There's no mission to help black people. If Black Lives Matter was cared about Black Lives Matter, Zeb, when a seven-year-old boy gets shot and a black, young black boy gets shot in Baltimore by another black individual, they'd be talking about it. They don't want to talk about it. They're too busy robbing and looting across America. It's absolutely absurd. I mean, we, I talk about it on my show daily, and I'm so frustrated. I've had enough of it. I think a lot of Americans had enough of it. I want to, you want to have a nice a protest, a legal protest, have a legal protest. This isn't legal protesting. This is guerrilla warfare on the streets of America, and it has to come to an end, and it can't go on. It has to come to an end now, Zeb. Amen. We have a caller with a comment. Caller, quickly, you're on the air, please. Yeah, real quick, like, what Black Lives Matter and uh, Antifa and the other leftists are doing right now, this is exactly what happened in Soviet Russia before the uh, Soviets took over. Just before the Tsar was overthrown, the communists were rioting and looting and doing everything that's happening here now. Uh, caller, I'll have Gary respond to you. Go ahead. There's some parallels there. There's no doubt about yes. it. I do believe, though, here in the United States of America, the fight will get a lot harder on the street, Seb, if they really try to, you know, overthrow and take over. Um, you know, they keep saying, I don't know about your neck of the woods, how much is going on there, and they've... It's been pretty quiet in the Boston area, but they keep saying they want to come into the suburbs. Zeb, that will be the biggest mistake that they make in their lifetime, because the suburbs are armed with citizens that will do whatever they have to do to protect their homes and their, their home and property. Which, again, the social contract that these cities, Portland and Seattle, have with their elected officials have been broken. So the taxpayers who are supporting these elected officials are taking their money and laughing at them and going out and protesting with these lowlifes. And that's what they are. They're purely lowlifes. They're, they're, they're this 
excuse my language, they're the scum of the earth. They're not doing anything to promote what they what their name claims they're promoting. They're using that as a facade, and it's, it's totally outrageous. And I think there are more and more people that that are outraged over this. They're just scared to say anything. Yeah, but right there, though, Gary, therein lies the problem and possibly also the solution to the problem. When and how can America be fed up enough to do something to get this stopped? In other words, 77, 78 days of straight violence and burning and looting and destruction and degradation in Portland and other cities, and the police are standing back not doing anything to protect the businesses and the property, etc. As far as I'm concerned, though, those first three words of the Constitution, we the people, it's going to fall on us, and by God, I'm ready to do it. Well, I think you and a lot of people are ready to do it. Look at, I, and I agree, I think that's what it's, if, if again, I, I commend the President where he sent the federal uh, police and the agencies to protect buildings, but telling the mayor of New York, telling them in Seattle, Portland, that you got to get this under control, I understand it's an election year, but you know what, to me, you, you ran on law and order, and you have to go in there and get law and order back into place because it is just what's happening is going to take forever years to restore these cities. And what are they going to do? They're going to be coming to us for the money to restore them as they are now. But it, it, it may come to the people. And if it comes to the, if they, if they attempt to come into the suburbs, and I will tell you this, Deb, I'm willing to say that before this election cycle, before this election, they're going to try and get into some suburbs and it's not going to be a good situation for them. Absolutely. I've got time for one more call. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Good morning. You know, this guy that shot the little boy, you know, do you know what his name is? Do you know if he's been apprehended? Do you know anything about it? Nobody is reporting on it. Well, that's not true, caller. Fox News uh, had reported that this person had been arrested for drug charges and other felonies in the past, and he was the neighbor to the family. And a black man walking up and shooting a five-year-old white boy in the head. Had the roles been reversed, Gary, the media would have been all over this. We'd be, talking now. We'd be, we'd be protecting our house and our property with arms. Because there would be the Rodney King riots would look tame compared to what would happen. Yeah, but therein lies the problem. Have we gone that far in America? Literally, I've used this before that the bus is headed over the cliff and there's no driver. How are we going to stop the bus? Yeah, no. Look at I, as I'm sure you do. I get on the air on a daily basis, regular basis, and I tell people it's going to take us, the people, yes. to solve this problem, and we have to put the pressure on, and we have to do whatever we're going to have to do to save America, because it's good versus eagle. I've said this on your show before. It's good versus eagle, and there are times that I get a chill up and down my spine because it looks like the evil is starting to turn uh, turn the tides on us here, uh, Zeb, and we can't allow that happen. We cannot allow that happen. We have to do whatever we have to do to save this country, the greatest country on the face of the earth. People would not want to come here and grow if it was such a horrible place. We have a Democratic Party. Who is, they're, they're perverse. They're, they're just totally out of touch with think and this is the, the way that they think they're going to solve america's problems and bring people to their party i think they're going to be surprised in november but with that said there's a long time between now and november and we can't allow this anarchy and this black lives matter these anarchists to go another evening of protesting and taking over cities uh, and towns across the real quick i'll take one more call for gary go ahead caller you're on the air quickly well, people need to realize that they are responsible for the decisions they make, and they need to be prosecuted. Yes, like you said men prosecuted. You said prosecuted. Are yeah, I mean, look at everybody thing. needs to be uh, held accountable right. for their decisions. The problem with the Black Lives Matter group and the anarchists, these rogue DAs across the country have told, uh, in Oregon, they've, they've told the police departments, we're not going to prosecute these guys no matter what they do. They're throwing Molotov cocktails at state police troopers, and the DA is not going to prosecute them? What is going on in the United States of America, then? Amen. And, you know, there again, you're back in Massachusetts, I'm here in Idaho, and it's going to take a combined effort. I wish that every single talk show host would reevaluate what they're doing, what they're saying, and how they're trying to communicate with their audiences because it 
it's high time that we turn the tables on the vermin and the lowlifes in our society, and either with imprisonment or whatever, they have to be stopped. Oh, I agree. And there's a chain of people that are going to go along with that, from political people that are going along with this and protesting with them, to DAs that are letting them walk the streets. They're guilty in my mind, Zeb, and they're accountable for their behavior because they're putting you and I and our families and friends and the rest of this country in harm's way on a daily basis. Gary has a book called My Big Mouth and the Ugly Truth, Taking the Stress Out of Opinions versus Fact. Gary Goldman, talk show host and a good friend of this program. God bless you, man, and thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure, Zeb. God bless you and take care. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate Gary coming on. He's one of my favorites to have on the air. Very straightforward and tells it like it is. Gary Goldman, thank you very much. Oh, boy, we've got to get the weather forecast on real quick. And the weather brought to you by my friends. And, boy, am I glad that we started going to them years ago, the professionals. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company, providing accounting services to the Minicamp area for well over 50 years. They are the best at what they do. Tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, bookkeeping services, retirement planning, all of this and so much more for you your family, and your business. Offices in Burley and Rupert, the professionals, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Keep that bottle of water and sunscreen handy for today and honestly for the next couple of days because we're going to be in a heat advisory. Here's what's your weather forecast. We are expecting sunny skies for today and a high of 100. Mostly clear skies for tonight, low of 64. Tomorrow, sunny and hot. Again, a high of 98 with an overnight low of 64 by Wednesday, mostly sunny, 96, maybe 92 for Thursday. That's what your weather for is at the ranch. Uh, thank you, Gina. Appreciate it. And don't forget the professionals, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And they can help all kinds of folks. Maybe you're starting a business or maybe changing over to a corporation or maybe you want to expand your business and hire more employees. You've got the questions. They've got the answers. The professionals, Phillips. Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company, with offices at 1710 Overland and Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. Holy moly, coming up next hour, don't forget, we've got Dr. Gerard Lomero, and you talk about another great straight shooter. He is that, and we're looking forward to having him on the air. While I have just a little bit of time here, I want to acknowledge some of the great businesses that are inviting you to attend the Cache County Fair and Rodeo this week, and they include Mountain Transmissions at 1146 East Main in Burley. Hello, Rick. Number to call, 678-9110. Free towing, free diagnostic, free estimates. you got a transmission that says it's in drive, but it's going backwards. you got a problem. They can help. They will help at Mountain Transmissions. And, of course, Kelly's Bearings at 1407 East Main and Burley. I'm telling you what, they've got all the bearings and the chains and the brackets, and I'll tell you, they say you'll know where you're at when you get your bearings at Kelly's Bearings. Don't forget to, and I used these people yesterday. Yesterday on Sunday, great service, Baker Brothers Pump Service. They are phenomenal. 103 West, 500 South of Burley. They are the fastest and most reliable pump service company. I'm telling you, they're a one-stop shop for all your pump service needs. They are Excellent, and I mean that. Baker Brothers Pump Service, and the number six seven eight nine zero four two. Caller, you're on the air. Good morning. Hey Zeb, uh, quickly. You know, speaking of the rodeo, I was told that uh, because the rodeos are shut down so many places where they're unreasonable counties or whatever, that there's so many cowboys who want to come that somebody said, now, I don't know if this is true, but you're going to tell me if I'm right or wrong. There were 400 cowboys that wanted to come to Jerome County Fair and Rodeo. I don't know about the Burley or Cajun County. And then he said there was 500 coming to Twin Falls County Fair and Rodeo. You know, this is, you know, cowboys riding, you know, whatever. Well, what you're saying is exactly true, and the numbers actually are even higher. 
And uh, across the board, whether it's Belfouche or whether it happens to be Prescott, Arizona, or whether it's any rodeo that's still in effect, uh, the numbers have skyrocketed. As a matter of fact, uh, rodeo secretaries are about ready to tear their hair out trying to figure out all that needs to be done to encompass and help all the many entrants that are going on across the board. The reason for the inflated numbers is simply they are, they being the Cowboys, are trying to make and work as many rodeos as possible in a short period of time because of a shortened season to qualify money-wise for the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas. I would not be shocked at all on the numbers uh, like Burley and other rodeos that are still going to stay in existence of seeing six to maybe even 700 contestants. I know of a rodeo earlier this spring that had close to 800. So the numbers are absolutely astronomical. Well, see, uh, this is so unfair to a cowboy who makes his living doing this, and then all of a sudden he has no place to go work. And so I know what it's like. My son you know, plays all over the West with his band, and he plays alone. And then all of a sudden he has no place to work. Well, a lot of people didn't realize, a lot of people didn't realize, Randy, and I'll say this real quick, that with the investment of literally maybe a quarter of a million dollars in fancy outfits and big rigs to haul all the horses and live on the road and the trucks and, and the semis and everything, and then to leave them dormant out in the backyard and you've got all these high priced horses and everything else. What happened with the coronavirus just absolutely was devastating to the professionals that work that sport. Oh, yes, and it's see, and in some cases, it, these things didn't need to occur. That's right. And, and you see, like I said, South Dakota's never done anything, and they're obviously uh, w- w- past it. They don't hate, you know, there's no animosity towards their governor, and uh, their, you know, Sturgis is alive and well, and, uh, you know, life has to go on. That's right. You know, I guess we could check everybody all the time for every kind of disease there is. And we, we hell, we would never, ever, we would just all die. It's an endless cycle of problems. You know, I, I, I know what, I've got to run, Randy, but I'll say you hit it right on the head. We are living in an endless cycle of problems, none of which are going to be taken care of. We still have to live life. Thank you so much for your call. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Don't forget Patterson's Electronics at 421 East Main in Burley. Hello, Curtis. Hello, Lorena. Really nice people. And, boy, when it comes to electronics, oh, my, they leave me in the dust. They absolutely know everything about all your electronic needs. Home theater systems, video surveillance cameras, car stereos and speakers, complete sound systems, all the TV sets by Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, LG TVs. They're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. And they say, come on in, we'll help you. And they will. At Patterson's Electronics, 421 East Main in Burley. You be sure and get a hold of them today. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. We're going to take a little break right now and let the big boys from CBS come in and mess everything up. And we're going to be back at uh, the seven minutes after the hour with Dr. Gerard Lamero. Don't you go away. Oh, thank you, thank you. And right now, uh, Zeb at the Ranch brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with the very, very best of tires and a very safe, clean environment. You stop in and see them today. Along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Before we go to our guest, I want to remind you quickly, I've got a cough drop in my throat, and so if I all of a sudden stop, I'm choking to death. Don't forget Greystone Crossing, Senior Living, oh my goodness, located at 122121st Street, just a mile east of Walmart. For seniors, I want you to listen up. This is a beautiful, beautiful, brand new 12-bedroom home, and it furnishes three meals a day, snacks, housekeeping, and local transportation, all included in the rent. 
very nice feature in the community. You be sure and call and make an appointment at 650-4979. They'll set up an appointment time to show you Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. I want to also give you a reminder about 7K Metals. Deanne and I have been uh, really, really making silver purchases to help build our financial security and future. I urge you to do the same. And it creates a saving opportunity and also a valued treasure for your loved ones in the future. I think if you want to find out more, I know two very knowledgeable people that can help you. Lon Hardy at 312-8699 or Sharon at 430-3259. Tell them I told you to call and they will will share with you all the information about 7k medals and silver purchases sent right to your home let me see i've got one other good word and then we're going to go right to the good doctor and that's lee's furniture floors and more my goodness sakes they're located at 459 overland and burley and they're having a sale on Simmons Beauty Rest mattresses. Oh, lay your head down and get a nice night's sleep. Oh, if you're having problems, the Simmons Beauty Rest mattresses are the answer. Along with that, they're having at least furniture, floors, and more. 40% off on all the window coverings and the blinds and the shades. And you know they've got all the carpet and all the floor coverings, along with the greatest selection of furniture for you at Lee's Furniture Floors and More, 459 Overland in Burley. One of my great friends on this program is an author, political analyst, and an expert on forecasting what's going to happen or not happen in politics, and he's right 99.19 times out of 10. Let's get him on the air right now. Dr. Gerard Lomero, good morning, sir. How are you? Great. It's great to be with you. Dr. Lomero, I want to start off, and uh, Sean, we've got a little feedback to start things off, if you could, please. I want to start off by asking you about the Biden-Harris ticket. Does it worry you, or what are your thoughts? It doesn't worry me at all. It doesn't affect the election hardly at all. Uh, Trump uh, is going to win, largely, and he may actually pick up another state or two with uh, several things that are hurting the Democrats right now. People are getting angry about being locked up. People are getting angry about the, the anarchy in the streets and the rioting and that that's been allowed by the Democrats in big cities and elsewhere. And uh, they're just upset, too, with Kamala Harris. She's considered a radical by many people. And Rasmussen reported a couple days ago that uh, looking at black Americans and polling them, that one out of three are less likely to vote for Biden because of his choice for vice president. Boy, is that something. Dr. Lomero, Kamala Harris has made some outrageous statements, one of which happened over this past couple of days after there was an attack on a Ronald McDonald house for sick and uh, uh, people and young children going in for surgery. They attacked the building, they threw rocks, broke the windows while the children were inside. And Kamala Harris came out afterwards and said, well, this is just a moral reckoning for our country. That's obscene. What are your thoughts? I share your thoughts. I think that is utterly inappropriate. Uh, she's condoning violence and she's doing what other Democrats have done. They're winking and, and, and looking the other way for violence, for burning down buildings, for looting stores. Some people have small businesses. They worked all their lives to build up and they've lost it. And there are people in cities, they call the police and they don't get a response. They can't get police response. The police have been told to stand down during these rioting and that. And also, they're afraid to go places. The police are afraid to enforce the law because they're not backed up by their mayors and by their local leaders. I think it's terrible. Kamala Harris is along that same line. She thinks the way the Democrats do, and she'd be a terrible president. Can you imagine if Biden is unable to serve, she becomes president and then doesn't enforce the laws? Well, How can we have 
have a president like that. Therein lies my next question, and and you've kind of touched on it. I mentioned it to my last guest that was on last half hour, Gary Goldman, back in Boston, Massachusetts. I really don't think in my heart of hearts right now, uh, Dr. Lomero, that when it comes to push and shove before Election Day, that Joe Biden still will be the number one nominee. I've got doubt in the back of my mind. I do, too. And I think they picked Kamala Harris because uh, they think she's going to be the next president. And, uh, I, and they think that because they want to pick someone who's going to go along with every radical idea there is. And she will go along, and she doesn't mind changing her opinions. She doesn't mind changing what she says. Uh, I don't think she really honors her word because it seems like she flip-flops a lot. And uh, they, they want her, and they see her as president. And uh, I'll tell you what, I don't think she'd make a good president. I don't think Biden would. And the two of them com- combined sure don't make a good ticket. There was a comment made, Dr. Lomero, and I'm sure probably you heard it, by a Black Lives Matter spokesperson that said basically, and I'm paraphrasing, that with all the riots and the looting and the burning, they, Black Lives Matter, are getting a form of reparations. Good heavens. That's right. Some of them want that. They want to take uh, billions of dollars away from white people and give it to black people who might have been the descendants of slaves from hundreds of years ago. They want to go back to 1600. Well, why don't they go back to the beginning of time and try to figure out everybody who's been wronged by everybody else? They'll have a big problem on their hands doing all that. No, I think it's just part of socialism. You know, socialism, you take from people that have things and you give it to who you want. So you give it to your friends or your particular favorite group. And that's what socialism is about. It's about theft. It really is about theft, because when you overtax people, you're stealing from them. You have no moral right to the money uh, and that, and that's what they're trying to do. And uh, certainly, it's no way to justify violence. It's theft. Let me ask you today, as I've asked my other guests this morning previous to your coming on, Pardon me. Today starts the Democratic National Convention, if you will call it that. And it's going to be virtual with the speakers tonight, I believe, are going to be Bernie Sanders and Michelle Obama. And this whole thing seems like a Star Wars initiative, if you will. While they're in behind closed doors and Bernie and others are behind closed doors and Joe's in the basement, our president, Donald Trump, is out stumping across America. What are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, Trump needs to meet the people and go out and see as many of his supporters as he can and rally the the troops, so to speak. And I think the Democrats are wise to hide in the cellar because I think if Joe Biden comes out, all he has to do is open his mouth and he loses votes because he doesn't sound normal. A lot of people think he does have dementia. And a lot of people think he's, he's not capable of serving. And some of the polls, which are not always right, and that think that most Americans think he's not going to fulfill four years. He's not even going to make it through four years. They don't think he's healthy enough. One of the things that scares me, and I mean scares me, is the, the Democrats' push to try to implement and force upon us mail-in voting. And I'd love to hear what your comments are. Well, I think mail-in voting in general is a problem. It's a problem when you send it out to every name on a list. Why is it a problem? Well, let me give you some examples. The last four years, 28 million mail-in ballots were lost. Deb, where are those 28 million ballots? I have no idea. They are lost. How many are going to be lost this year? Add to that, let's look at some states. California was ordered to take people off the rolls, the registration voting rolls, who moved out of state, who became felons, who uh, didn't vote and are no longer eligible to keep their registration because it isn't active. Uh, Some people left the state for high taxes. But they're going to send them ballots to their old addresses. Now, who picks up those ballots? Who, who, Who votes those ballots? Or do the people honestly throw away every ballot they get that isn't theirs? I mean, there are ballots that are being sent to dogs and cats. Do they get the vote? 
Well, in some places, maybe they do. And that's utterly ridiculous. It is ripe for fraud. There's another law in some places called harvesting, where you allow somebody in the party to go around, pick up at nursing homes or anywhere else they can find them, ballots. And supposedly they're picking them up to save them the trouble to bring it to the poll. Why can't people bring it to the poll themselves if they're really there? If they're, what about if they moved out of state and their ballot is there? Somebody going to pick it up and vote it for them? That's ridiculous. Let me ask you this. With the... You know something new, new thing. The reason the Democrats and the Republicans did not agree on the last uh, aid package was because Pelosi wanted to have in the package the, the fact that they wanted to make harvesting required all over the country, that you could pick up thousands of ballots and bring them in, thousands. Mm -hmm. And in addition, they would outlaw using signature verification. A lot of states have signature verification to verify the person who registered originally is the same signature who voted it. Can you imagine eliminating? All they're doing is trying to make rules that make it easy to steal votes. Uh, totally, totally ridiculous. Let me ask you, though, Dr. Lomero, do you think that the American public is aware of these illegalities? Are they aware of these uh, issues that are against our Constitution and our voting rights and privileges in this country? Or are they becoming naive or immune to even caring about this? No, I think they're becoming very alert to it. I think as time goes on, they're seeing the Democrats more and more in their true light. Because no longer are the Democrats hiding who they are. They come out and say they're socialists. Some of them will tell you they're communists to your face. So they're not hiding who they are, and the American people are catching on. American people know already that the media is so biased, it's not even media. It is, you know, journalism is supposed to be objective. There's nothing objective about the mainstream media, as you know. And people know it, and they start discounting everything they say. So if you heard it from NBC News, you say, well, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I don't buy it necessarily. That's what they're saying. And they're planning to vote in mass. There are many people who have never voted before that said, I'm coming out to save this country. I want to have police in my city. I want to be protected by the police. I do not want my rights violated by these politicians who are out of control. And I'm going to vote for the first time. People are saying, I'm voting for the very first time. Yeah. Let me ask you this, though, and, and I hate to sound like a pessimist, but I think I'm being more realistic about this situation. With all the illegalities and the under-the-table or behind-closed-doors attitudes that the Democrats and the left have going into this election, and the more that Trump speaks out against the mail-in balloting and the more that uh, people like myself speak up in favor of go to the polls and vote in person, show your ID and be proud of who you are, I am really concerned about the left and the illegalities taking over this election. What are your thoughts? Well, Trump has been planning for it. He's worried about it, and he's doing a lot. Uh, they're training people all over the country to fight fraud. Uh, they're putting lawyers in place all over the country to fight fraud. And they're training uh, a lot of their volunteers to be poll watchers, election judges. They're going through special training classes. And um, it teaches them how to do the job right and how to, you know, pick up something that looks kind of suspicious. So Trump is anticipating the problem, but like so many problems, he is good. He's a good leader. And he has taken action before the problem hits us. And that's the way to do it. Prepare and be ready. And he's going after them if they're going to steal votes. He's not going to let them walk away with this. I've got to ask you, and I'm going to change gears here a little bit, Dr. Lomero, into a subject that I'm sure that you're aware of. But we are being, we, you and me, and others of the Caucasian race, are being accused of having white 
privilege. And many businesses are having training courses right now to make the whites feel bad and remorseful for who they are and what they are and then apologize. Uh, This is a trend that I see going on in businesses and also starting in the school systems. My goodness, Dr. Lomero, this has got to stop. Yes, it does. It's, it's ridiculous. We are Americans. We are equal. Have there been problems in the past? Anybody will say there have been problems. But people are free, and we are equal. And we don't overcome past problems by making some people more equal than others now. We've got to keep everybody equal. Equal playing field is, is the name of the game. It isn't go bow down and genuflect in front of a different racial group because there was a problem in the past. You know, slavery was all over the world for centuries. In America, it it was started to get wiped out, and that's great. And uh, rather than feel like we've got to apologize, we should be proud that this country thought freedom was so important to give it to everyone and eliminate slavery, and the rest of the world should do the same. The places where they do have slavery today should get rid of it. Follow our lead. Absolutely. We're proud of this country. We have a caller with a question for you, Dr. Lomero. Stand by. Caller, please, you're on the air. Yes. Uh, I have a question. You know, like we live in Burley, Idaho, which is a real peaceful town, and we can discuss with our neighbors, you know, if they're Democrat, or well, we can have a civil. Uh, conversation with them, but if you go to Boise, you better keep your mouth shut. Okay. Make your point, please, caller. Well, most people are afraid to say what they're really going to do. Okay. They're going to vote because there may be repercussions. All right. We'll have Dr. Lomero address that. Doctor, if you would, please. I'm not sure I understand his question. Maybe I missed a couple of Well, I think what he's saying is that uh, a lot of people that are conservative and or Republican are afraid to speak out in larger metropolises, uh, city capitals, whether it's Boise, Idaho, or New York City, or Chicago, because of repercussions against them. Yes, that's true. There was a study by the Cato Institute that said recently, about a week ago, 77% of conservatives are afraid to speak. They're worried it's going to affect their job or affect something else. I say that's terrible. We have a First Amendment. We have the right to talk freely. You don't call fire in a, in a crowded theater, but you're allowed to talk freely everywhere else. And, uh, and unfortunately, a lot of Americans feel that way. They shouldn't. They should stand up and say, I'm an American, I'm free to give my opinion. If you don't like it, fine, don't like it, but I'm giving my opinion. They need to stand up, and and it's unfortunate some people are being, you know, bullied into not talking. But I'll tell you one thing, they're not being bullied into not voting for Trump, because they're going to say their say when it comes to the voting vote. You know, Dr. Lomero, in your book, your latest book, Real World Socialism, you had quite a bit of information regarding socialism resulting in less energy and less energy uses of our resources. And we're seeing this with the AOCs and uh, the possibility of renewable energy that's going to bankrupt America, solar and wind. I'd like you to comment. You were kind of a forecaster of what's going to happen. Yes, well, if uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, are elected president and vice president and that they want to put in the Green New Deal and make AOC, that radical congressman from New York, in charge of it. And what they would do is essentially eliminate fossil fuel, eliminate cars. Uh, They want to eliminate cows. They They don't want you to have hamburgers for lunch or dinner. Uh, you know, they have a radical energy agenda. We are energy independent, thanks to Donald Trump, for the first time in our history. We don't want to go backwards. Uh, without energy, the economy shrinks. Uh, everything requires energy. I don't care if it's a factory. I don't care if it's trucking, you know, getting things 
to market, getting things to where people need it. Everything requires energy. They want to shut down our energy industry. It's going to cost billions of jobs and billions of dollars of wealth, and we're going to be living poor like in Venezuela, like those other socialists did there. Dr. Gerard Lomero, with his great book, Real World Socialism, Spiritual, Moral, and Economic Bankruptcy, Sold by Using False Hopes and Deceit. It's an excellent book. Dr. Lomero, quickly, where can they obtain the book? Oh, Amazon or any bookstore. It's, a, it's in books and print. If the bookstore ran out of them, you, you can order them. And they can also go to my website, Great News for that's F O R, Great News for America dot com. I really appreciate your taking the time to come on my program, Doctor Gerard Lomero, my friend. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you, and you have a wonderful program. All right, sir. Thank you very, very much. That man means a lot to my program, and I seriously want to have him back as often as he can have the time to come on. Dr. Gerard Lomero, thank you very much. Right now, I want to remind everybody about what's going on at the Cache County Fair and Rodeo. Big, big doings. We're going to have Ryan Samples on the air with us a little bit uh, from now. I want to urge you to remember some of the great businesses that are in Inviting you to the Cache County Fair, including Mountain Transmissions at 1146 East Main in Burley. Oh my, Rick and the rest of the crew, 6789110. Your transmission's just not performing right, Bunky. You thought you were backing out of the garage, but you went forward, and well, there went the garage. Well, I'll tell you what, they're your one stop transmission repair facility with over 30 years of service. They're the best. Mountain Transmissions with Rick, right there on East Main in Burley. Golden Valley Warehouse at 468 West, 1000 South of Burley. Don't forget these wonderful, wonderful people. Locally owned and operated for more than 35 years by the Adams family. Quality seed, barley, wheat, triticale, oats, alfalfa, you name it. And I guarantee you a friendly staff at Golden Valley Warehouse. And Perkins Bakery and Restaurant at 800 North Overland and Burley. Boy, I'll tell you what, easy access right there by the Burley Inn, and it's a great place to go after the rodeo or maybe in the morning for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It's all there for you at Perkins Bakery and Restaurant, 800 North Overland in Burley. Well, let's send it back over to our main studio right now, and we're going to return in about three minutes with our next guest. It's going to be Deb Hines and Dog Days with the Minidoka Animal Control. Stay tuned. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb. Oh, thank you much. Don't forget a quick reminder about our friends at Riverview Urgent Care at 382 North Overland and Burley and also the Urgent Care of Twin Falls on Addison Avenue East and the Urgent Care of Jerome at 133 West Avenue. Avenue A in Jerome. They're providing sports physicals for only 10 bucks. 10 bucks used to be 20, now it's just 10. Why? Because they're going to be donating back that money to your school's athletic program. This is valid for the entire month of August. So you better get on in there. $10 sports physicals, compliments of the Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care and Burley, Urgent Care of Twin Falls, and Urgent Care of Jerome. Wonderful wonderful people no appointments necessary you get in there today ten dollar sports physicals and the money back to your school's program thank you urgent cares right now we're going to go to the phone line and we're going to find out all about that doggy in the window and we have with us minidoka animal control and that's deb hines good morning deb how are you I'm good, Deb. How are you doing? I'm doing really, really well. And, uh, boy, I, I think I'd really like you to start off with a little care about the dogs and outside animals. I want you as a animal control officer to tell us about the heat and what we need to be doing to make sure that our dogs, etc., are taken care of in these hot temperatures. Well, along with your horses and your cattle and everything else, please, please make sure they have got an overabundance of water. 
they also honestly and truly need kind of a place where they can get into the shade and out of the direct sun. Um, that's one of the criteria that we that I look for in, when I get calls about animal abuse is do they have food, do they have water, and do they have shelter? Those are the things that the state has required that we have. But making sure they've got plenty of water because here we go again with these 100 degree days and it's not good for them. They'll get sick and they could die. Deb, let me interrupt and ask you this. Uh, in the case of many, like, horse owners that uh, they're in box pens or stalls outside and they don't have a roof over their heads, I personally, and I'm not trying to make myself sound better, but twice a day I go out with a garden hose and literally spray down the pen and also spray the animal down with water. Exactly, and... You know where I live, so I have indoor kennels where I keep my personal dogs. And, but my dog, my horses have shelter over them, but they've got access to two different troughs. Right. But my dogs, I go in and spray down that inside facility twice a day. Yep. Because some way you got to drop that temperature in there. Absolutely. And in the case of, like, where my horses are, uh, unfortunately, they're up against the back wall as a tin roof or tin shed uh, wall, and that heat reflects off of that. So I go out at noon and then again about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, twice a day, spray the ground down, get it almost to the point where it's a little muddy, and then also spray the animal down, and it seems to really help. It does, and that'll help drop their temperature. And like I said, it's, we know how bad we react to this heat. Imagine having all of that hair on your entire body. Yes. I mean, seriously, you've got to do something to help them. And we're the only, they can't tell us what's going on, so we have to be diligent about making sure that everything's got plenty of food and water and cover. They need to get out of the heat. Absolutely. Deb, let's get right to the situation at hand. What's the dog situation? Uh, we have a caller. We'll take that call first, and then we'll talk about the dogs. Caller, real fast, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yes, hello. Yes, go ahead. I have a question, Deb. I don't know if this is off subject or not. It probably is. But I'm very, very, very concerned about this hydro hydroxychloroquine. And the banning of it? Well, I can't talk about that right now, and I'll tell you why. Because we're in the middle of a segment that's called Dog Days to okay. feature some of the homeless dogs. And I will get oh. back into it tomorrow morning if you'll call in the first hour. How's that? Please do that. Okay, yeah, because I'm just wondering how what Idaho has, has uh, you know, proclaimed on, on that. Okay, so. I'll... If you'll call back tomorrow morning, I'll certainly address it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deb, let's talk a little bit about some of the dogs you have that need new owners and a new home. Tell us about one. Okay. Um, this morning, I picked up a year-and-a-half-old tricolor female border collie. Uh, the people that had her posted her and have been trying to find her owner and we haven't got any hits on her this is one super dog i'm not kidding she is still small very very quiet and is definitely a people puppy in fact i haven't even named her so if anybody would like to call me with a name i would appreciate it okay. i'm serious now and i also have in two four month old border collie third border Healer Cross Pups, they're both red and white, okay. and I need to get them into a home as well because this just isn't the place for little people at all. Well, now, Deb, let me ask you about this. The origination, you said you picked up this uh, Border Collie this morning, I believe. Uh, what was it? A, a owner just absolutely couldn't take care of it anymore? Uh, give us a little background. Well, from what I understand, the dog showed up at his place for two weeks. State law says after three days you own the dog. Um, he said he's got grandchildren, and I know that because I've been there before. This dog is phenomenal with the kids, but he doesn't have anything the dog can work. It's just him, his daughter, and his grandkids. Right. But she, like I said, he said that she's super wonderful with his grandkids. She's never offered to bite or do anything negative towards anybody but they just can't have her 
Okay. And what about the case of the four-month-old uh, healers? They were in my drop box, no paperwork. Um, I'm going to vaccinate them, obviously, today, but they are just, I don't think they're going, I think they'll be about the size of a healer, and you know that's not very big. No. And cute and lovable, but they're puppies. They just need, I'll be honest with you, I think it's one of those, I got a puppy, I can't deal with it, so I'm going to get rid of it. Yeah. You so know, I just need somebody that's looking for something that will work for them. Right. As a dog that will be with them, because these little guys, I think, are going to be glued to you. You know, Debbie, you touched on something right there I want you to elaborate on. I've got about three minutes left in this segment. You know, when people get a puppy for the first time, there's some things and some uh, cautions that they should know about. Why don't you explain some of that in case they're kind of naive about what it is to raise a puppy? Honestly, the first thing I tell people is if you can't raise another child, don't get a pup because that's exactly what they are. They are very demanding. They start chewing on everything in your house. They, you know, if you haven't got the time to be with them and start working with them immediately and training them, I would prefer you get an older dog that's already been there, done that. Mm -hmm. So puppies are, they're hard. They're very hard. But once you've got them acclimated to you and the things you do, they're going to be the best friend you've ever had in your life because they will grow up and you are the mom or the dad and they're the ones that's who they want to protect that's who they want to be with I can tell you that when uh, our longtime dear friend Ruby that we had for over 17 years died and we decided after a couple of months to get a corgi pup, uh, do not, ladies and gentlemen, ever leave a good pair of Tony Llama boots anywhere close by. Oh, no, you do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when you give them things and that's what people well i just give them shoes don't give them shoes people please they have toys out there give them a toy so they know the difference between this is mine and that's yours you can't give them something that you don't want them to chew up and they will chew they will chew everything up from plastic dishes to water bottles they'll shred those plastic water bottles i mean they just love to chew things up and they can't help it they're a puppy yeah they're a puppies yeah mine's done a real great job on my wood around my floor uh -huh. like, seriously <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be taken care of here shortly but yeah they they chew that's how they they tease just like a child that's why i said if you don't want another baby don't get a puppy. Now, in regards to these dogs that you have now and the other dogs over there at Minidoka Animal Control, please tell everybody who to call, what number, and what hours you're open. Okay, just give us a call at 208-438-2200. We're open from 8 to 1 on Monday through Friday and 8 to noon on Saturdays. We will be happy. I've got people here that understand the dogs, know the dogs, will be happy to get whatever you need into a home and keep you and them happy. Absolutely. You know, Deb, I really appreciate your doing this. I mean, you're doing a great service to the community. You're doing a great service to the dogs, and you're helping folks. God bless you for your efforts right here on Dog Days. I appreciate it, Deb. Any final thoughts? Go ahead. Nope, I just want to thank you for having us on, and I wasn't kidding. If anybody's got some names, please let us know, because we're kind of running out here. Okay. <laughs> well, we named our corgi puppy Festus, after Festus Hagen on Gunsmoke. Good man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, God bless you, Deb. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Talk to you later. Dog days. And, of course, trying to find some new homes for those pups and those dogs. Deb Hines, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Right now it's time for the weather. And the weather is brought to us this hour by our friends at Scarrow's Meats. Hello, Don Scarrow and the rest of the outfit. My, my, my. Delicious meats from Scarrow's Meats. Having a company picnic or maybe a family gathering or whatever, consider all the 
marinated pork ribs or the tri-tips or all the different sausages, all the delicious bratwurst, everything from Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, 324-7657, or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Absolutely great meats from Scarrow's Meats. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Keep that bottle of water and sunscreen handy for today and honestly for the next couple of days because we're going to be in a heat advisory. Here's what's your weather forecast. We are expecting sunny skies for today and a high of 100. Mostly clear skies for tonight, low of 64. Tomorrow, sunny and hot. Again, a high of 98 with an overnight low of 64. By Wednesday, mostly sunny, 96, maybe 92 for Thursday. That's what your weather for is at the Oh, my goodness. It's going to be warm. Please make sure you got water with you. Please. And make sure all your pets are taken care of, too. Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, 324-7657. It is really true. They are changing the way we eat. One delicious bite at a time. Uh, Let's see what else have I got cooking here. Nothing right now, and that means we can spend just a little bit more time with our dear friend Ryan Samples at the Cache County Fair and Rodeo. I would imagine that he's probably got a corn dog in his hand and a cold drink in the other hand, and he's standing in the shade. Ryan, are you there? I'm standing in the shade. I don't know about them other two deals. I'm standing in the shade. Well, tell me a little bit about... Now, here we are, basically the first day of the full week of the Cache County Fair and Rodeo, but I want to find out a little bit about what happened last weekend with the Neil McCoy concert and also the Monster Truck Insanity. Bring us up to speed. Oh, uh, Neil McCoy was a great show. We had... The show was... Spectacular, in my opinion. They were excited because it was their first show with real life people since March, so it was very. They were excited and uh, went off well. I think we were well attended, and the monster truck last night was. Last year was a record, and this year was a bigger record, bigger attendance. So. Now, did you get a chance to go out and drive any one of those great big monster trucks? No, they won't let me do any of that good stuff. They just tell me what to do. <laughs> Okay, let's take it from today right now as to what's going on over there. I would imagine there's a lot of judging in the various categories. Uh, there's a lot of, I think there's open class and some of that stuff open for entry today. There's a, the dairy shows going on right as we speak, and there's a dairy sale tonight at 5, I believe it starts at 5, in the sale barn. So anybody wants to come out and support the dairy, dairy kids, come out and get your dairy heifer. And then the Moto Rodeo starts tonight at 7 o'clock. Now, tell me a little bit. I'm kind of a naive cowboy when it comes to a Moto Rodeo. What do they do? Well, we've tried to interject some jumps, some barrel racing, some pole bending. Uh, We haven't haven't figured out how to tie in roping yet, but we'll get it one of these days. And then uh, just try to make a head-to-head race, and then whoever lasts the longest wins. Okay. Now, this is going to be tonight and tomorrow night, is that correct? Is that correct? Yeah, we do some eliminations tonight, and then tomorrow night will be all the ones that be the finals tomorrow night. Okay. okay. Now, Wednesday is going to be a big day, and Sean over at the studio, I got a little feedback here if you could help me out a little bit. Uh, Wednesday's going to be a big, big day because at 1030 in the morning, you're going to have the huge Cache County Fair and Rodeo Parade. We're going to start it off with the parade, and... Uh, Lineups are at the Burley High School, I believe. It's and it's uh, just first come, first serve. So it's gonna be first in lines if you just get over there early. Okay. Now, is there any entrant uh, fee, or is it just like you said, first come, first serve? Everybody get in line. Yep, everybody get in line, and they'll they'll line you up. There is some, there is some, uh, still some categories. There'll be some judging. Uh, I believe they are going to have it on Facebook Live. So if you want to. If you want to stay home, watch it on Facebook Live instead of attending. It's going to be broadcast that way. Um, then there's going to be some. I think there's going to be some voting, crowd voting, crowd favorites, whatever type of type of stuff. Plus a little some judging going on for the best votes and best stuff. So. 
<laughs> okay. So basically, you're going to have every day at the Cache County Fair, you're going to have a lot of judging, whether it's uh, uh, the dairy cattle or the chickens or the turkeys or the dog show or whatever. And then in the evenings, you've got special events. Like on Wednesday night, you're also going to have a team sorting. Why don't you explain that to the audience? Uh, the team ranch sorting is a three-man team, ten cows in a ten cows in a pen, and they have to call out a number and they sort them that sort them from the number back to back to one to ten, and uh, fastest time wins. And so uh, we usually have I don't know 150 teams that show up, so it's a pretty good evening, free to the public. So come down, get you some fair food, and watch the team ranch sorting. You know, now you touched on it. We might as well talk about it. What about the great food booths at the Cache County Fair? You know, we've got quite a different variety of food than we've had in the past. Some of the vendors that didn't want to come, but uh, if there's a there's a big variety. So if you'd like to come down and get a hamburger, a taco, a corn dog, turkey leg. Those are just the ones I've seen. So I haven't attended, no, I haven't ate all those yet, but I haven't seen them there. Now, if I talk to you again before Fair Week's over, I'm sure being the connoisseur that you are, you will have sampled everything. Is that right? Is that right? Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> We can try. Hey, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'm skipping here a little bit, but I want to mention you've got a great PRCA rodeo. Give us some of the background on it. Uh, The PRCA rodeo is going to be excellent this year, in my opinion. We're going to have probably the most bareback, saddle bronc, and bull rider we've ever had signed up. So uh, it'll be a full slate every night. I know there's 12 in each event every night, so that's more than we've ever had. Um... Thursday night is the family night, uh, tough enough to wear pink night. Thursday, uh, Friday night, I think, is purple night. Or maybe it's the other way around. I can't remember for sure. Saturday night's Patriot night. So we've, and we've got some special things planned for that to honor honor all the people who protect and serve us. All right. Now, Ryan, you touched on it a minute ago, but I want to elaborate on it. I can tell everybody for a fact that of the rodeos across the country that are sanctioned by the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, the numbers are skyrocketing as far as entries are concerned. Some rodeos are looking at 700 to 800 contestants, and I would imagine that Burley is not going to be an exception. We're not going to be an exception. We've got slack on Friday night. We'll be lucky if we get home Friday, Saturday morning early to get any rest. So, yep. Uh, we've got, we've got, every event is clear full. And then the, the slack, I know we've got 70, I know we, we've had a limit, but we've got 75 calf ropers, 75 team rope, team roping teams, bulldoggers and 75 barrel racers to take care of. So, You know, I'm going to ask you a quick question here, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but is the Cowboy Channel going to feature anything from Burley? We haven't got it. We haven't, had, we haven't been approached by him yet, so okay. I guess not. Okay. I just wanted to check. Now, let me ask you this. Along with the rodeo, during the daytime on Friday and Saturday, what about the parimutuel horse racing? There's... There, we're, right now we're planning on Paramedia horse racing. We don't know until Tuesday, Wednesday what our draw will be for horses, but the plan is right now to have a full slate of racing. And from the rumors around, there will be the races will be big because there's plenty of horses to go around. When the people go to the fair and they get a little tired and they want to sit down for a while and maybe enjoy some music, what's going to go on at the free stage? Uh, at the free stage, we've got a hypnotist and we've got a... Another act, the amazing Arthur. Um, he does. He does. I don't know, he's quite the character, really. But he uh, he does. He has. He has a little act. He does. Kind of interacts with the crowd. So there's two of those going on three times a day. Uh, we've moved the stage. We moved the stage to a different spot this year. It's actually over maybe in the shade of the trees a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're trying to do the free stage and all that. All right. One question I forgot to ask you about the rodeo. What about tickets? Is it advisable for people to get tickets beforehand if they want reserve seating? Well, everything this year is reserve seating because of our COVID problem. But uh, so we're trying to keep track of people, trying to do what we can. Um, and yes, it'd be great if everybody would go online and at least fill out the the waiver that's been presented to us as part of our deal to go forward. So we have a waiver. 
if you can go online and fill out that waiver, it really speeds up the lines. And if you want to buy your tickets ahead of time, that's great at KaiserCountyFair.com. And uh, we'll have them. We can, you can either pick them up down here and get your wristband or... We'll, well, I'm waiting for you when you show up before the rodeo. Okay, now, Ryan, one thing I want to mention is these kids that are involved in 4-H and FFA, they put their heart and soul into their project, and you're going to have the 4-H and FFA market sale, animal sale, when? When is that going to take place? Okay, we got the dairy show tonight, or the dairy sale tonight, so that takes care of the dairy animals starting at 5 in the sale barn. And then on Saturday morning at 7 is the buyer's breakfast, and at 8 o'clock, the sale starts starts this year for all the kids at the, in the sale barn. So uh, come on down and support them all. I know it's going to be a little different. From last year, we used to do five steers, five sheep, five pigs. They're going to do all one, all one, all one species this year. So it may be a little different than what you're used to, but we're going to get through it. They need the support. You know, is there anything you'd like to add to the list of things that we've talked about this morning? Um, just come down if you feel like coming down here and support us. Is that it's much appreciated? If you, if you feel like it's uncomfortable, don't. But uh, you know, we've we've got this waiver deal going. I know it's we've been through a couple nights. It's been we're working through it. We're trying to get it all done, but uh, doing the best we can with what we've got. It'll get better as the week goes on. Absolutely. Ryan Samples has always been a friend of this program, and I really appreciate everything you do on behalf of the Cache County Fair and Pro Rodeo. We're going to send everybody over, stay cool, go get some ice cream, sit in the shade, and repeat as often as possible. Okay, I will. <laughs> okay, Ryan. God bless you, man. Thanks much. Thank you, Zeb. All right, take care. Ryan Samples with the Cache County Fair and Rodeo. Holy cow, we're almost out of time, and I've got just enough time to tell you about our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. They have the best in tires. That's not bragging. That's a fact. It's a fact. They've got all the sizes, all the tread designs. I mean, for your car, your pickup, your SUV, your horse trailer, boat trailer, whatever, and Believe me, they've got a lifetime tire and mileage care for your tires, free flat tire repairs, free tire rotations, free tire rebalancing, free air checks, free brake and alignment checks. My goodness, do they serve you. Absolutely. And also with the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, it's all there at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Don't forget James and Buell, Dan on Pole Line in Twin Falls, Lane and Rupert, Mike and Jerome, Dave on Blue Lakes in Twin, the Twist family in Paul, and my buddy Trent on Overland in Burley. The best, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. That's going to do it. Wrap it up. Put a bow on it. And we're going to say the way things were, the way things ought to be. And the four words that mean the most to me at the end of the program in God We Trust. We'll be back tomorrow at 8.06. Got a great program lined up with some really top-notch guests. Don't miss a minute of it. Zeb at the Ranch, you take care and stay cool. We'll see you tomorrow morning.